What's going on everyone? Sneaky Mofo back here with another cheat engine tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, AOB scans, array of bytes, uh, and digging into some things of that nature. And what I want to start with is defining an array of bytes, or AOB. It's a lot easier than it might seem at first glance. So basically an array of bytes is like this. FF 01, 45, 2C, blah, blah, blah. That's an array of bytes, or a sequence of bytes, or a group of bytes. So array is just kind of a fancy way to sort of say group. That's it. And this is a byte here, this is a byte, this is a byte, and this is a byte. So it's a group of bytes. So when you're doing an AOB scan, or an array of byte scan, you are scanning for a group of bytes. That's it. All right. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so if you wanted to do a manual array of byte scan, you can do that, selecting from the drop-down box here array of byte, and then let's say you had this array of bytes that you wanted to search for. Um, anytime you do this, I recommend setting this, uh, the little block, uh, you know, not the check mark, but, and not empty, but that block or dot, whatever you want to call it. Setting that, it'll set it to readable and writable that you search for. A lot of times the array of byte signatures that I come up with, which I'll explain what that is in a little while, um, I need to have both of these selected for the scan to actually work. So. I have this, I have Cheat Engine attached to this game right now, Honey Pop, and, uh, you know, that didn't bring anything up, of course, that was just a random group of bytes that I put in there. Alright, so, knowing what an array of bytes happens to be, and how to do a manual scan for an array of bytes, an array of byte scan script okay which is if you go into the memory viewer here then you can get to this menu where you can get to auto assemble and let's say AOB injection this is just a default template here based on uh, somewhere that you have selected in your memory viewer okay and we'll go through that in just one second here but this is what a script looks like for an AOB scan and all that's happening here is that Whenever the person enables the script, so let's file assigned current cheat table. All right, real quick, I want to mention whenever you get into doing these, do not hit execute because it'll just go ahead and do whatever you've done. What you should do is, you know, open it up, set the template if you want, go to file assigned current cheat table, then you close it, and then when you go in here and you double click on script, it'll bring it back up, and now you'll see OK. And what that is, is whenever you make changes in here, you can just say OK, and it saves those changes, all right, instead of executing it instantly. The reason why there's an execute button there is because you have other things when you first go into Memory Viewer and you go Auto Assemble. There's other things you can do, like Code Injection, all right, which is essentially kind of the same thing, and you'll want to do this pretty much instantly, so you have Execute there, all right. So that's kind of explaining why that's there like that. Anyway, back to this. So uh, you have your script here. Enable means that whenever the user checks here, it's going to enable your script. Okay? And when a script is enabled with an AOB scan, it will go ahead and scan for this array of bytes. Okay? So Cheat Engine is, for right here, what Cheat Engine is doing is. Uh, an automated version of you doing this array of bytes all right scan for that array of bytes okay that's all that the script is doing here all right so then what happens after that is inject okay it'll do the scan it'll go to inject where is inject inject is here once it gets to inject it'll jump to code which is right here and then this is where you can put in your code whatever you want it to do instead of what the default code is from whatever you selected in here alright 
and then once that's done it will jump to return which is right here and then after return it just goes back into the, what the original code is so your injection in your script happens here and this is a snippet of the original code um, that you're injecting your own code around and then it goes back to wherever it jumped off of and I will show you exactly what all that stuff is so um, last of note you see how there's two results here that's not good if you're gonna be doing an array of byte scan as you can see here it says should be unique basically that means the array of bytes that you have you want it to only return one result because if you have two results like this that it finds and it starts injecting your code it could feasibly do that I don't know if cheat engine will inject it in all instances of this or if it picks one and goes to town or what but either way you don't want that you only want one result so how do you make better results well you go down and wherever your injection is see this array of bytes right here that's this so to make a signature an array of bytes signature more unique is you keep adding bytes so you're going this way just keep continuing down the list you know we might select these and add those in up here and do the next two and add those in and then you could save that script right so let's go ahead and verify this array of bytes signature by doing a new scan and there we have one result so we know that if we ran the script if we enabled the script it's gonna do what we want at the address we've designated okay one last thing to mention here is that whenever you run this you may be saying well where the hell does cheat engine dump you off at you how does it know what to do all right no matter how long your array of bytes signature is whoosh, it can be off the page it can be hundreds of bytes if you want it to be um, it will dump you off at wherever the first byte is okay so it knows where in code to put you at based on your scan and there's other things that I'll get into explaining later where if you need to make your signature more unique you can start adding bytes back from your original injection point like this C3 and then going to uh, inject here and saying plus one and then what will happen is it'll run this array of byte scan all right I said I was gonna explain this in a minute but I guess I'm doing it now <laughs> it'll run this array of byte scan and once it does it if it finds that array of bytes boom you go to inject which is here and it says inject plus one which cheat engine then knows okay I ran this array of byte scan but you've got plus one so that means I want to skip this byte here and start you off here all right so there's other reasons for that other than making your signature more unique but just be aware that you'll see some as you get more and more into this whether you're downloading other people's scripts or you're creating your own you'll start seeing plus five plus twenty two plus this plus that um, that's what's going on all right so we're gonna say okay here we're gonna delete that script all right so what I've explained there is how to manually do a scan for an array of bytes right and then creating that array of bytes or verifying that array of bytes based on what you've done with your own script that you create so another benefit to that is if you know a game comes out you've got an array of bytes for as long as that version of the game is out you can keep starting the game start cheat engine run the script and it will find that array of bytes as long as you've identified you know a solid array uh, of bytes signature that won't be changing okay and then let's say they update the game and suddenly part of the code from the array of bytes you've selected has changed so all that you'll need to do is just go in find what that new signature is replace it and then boom right so you can be, you know verify and do all that stuff yourself cool so what I want to do now you know if if that's all you needed to know about it that's all you're interested in you can go ahead and close the video if you'd like or keep watching that segment over and over what I'm gonna do now is actually go through 
find a value for something, create my own script, run it, and show you like what's going on and kind of explain that. So I'm about to dive into some assembly and um, you know this is going to make the video considerably longer from this point forward. So um, I hope you want to watch it though because this is good stuff. Okay, so what I want to do here is you know, in your game, what do you want to find? Do we want to find money? Do we want to find whatever this crap is? You know, what else do we want to find? You know, these hearts, this hunger, just anything. Well, what I'm going to do is go into the little mini game, and um, I want to create a cheat that allows me f to instantly win, basically. Okay? So. In this game, this is kind of like Bejeweled-ish, but not it's very simple, basically. But, you know, we see here that 0 out of 1725. All right, so we're going to do a new scan. We're going to go for 0. We'll just set it to 4 bytes. All right, exact value of 0 first scan. All right, it might not be 0, you know what I mean? It might be some other value, but because I've already dug around in this game, I'm just going to go ahead and head straight for certain things like this. Okay, searching for zero. I know this is zero. Alright, so now we're going to make a match and then that'll make our score go up. And now we're going to, uh, I'm going to say increased value by 10 because that seems to filter down results a good bit more than just looking for the exact value after zero. Um, and then we'll make another match here. All right, that went up by 21. Next scan. All right, we're down to two. One is our score. The other is going to be like the score as you see it here on the screen. So what we're going to do is watch these two values because as you've seen in the game, the score counts up slowly. So as soon as I make a match, one of these values will change instantly to reflect the new value, whereas the other one will be going through the count up animation. All right, you'll see what I mean here. Okay, see how this one was counting up? That's not the one we want. We want this one. Double click it there. We'll say score. Okay. So now what we can do is, you know, just to make sure that that's our score, let's set that at 100. And then let's make another match. And then it should go up to 100 plus however many more it would be past 41. Uh, here we go. There we go. All right, so... Yeah, but I, I can't remember what I changed that to. It seems like that should have been more than that. But anyway, long story short, we know we've got it now. We're changing that value. It's all good. Um, so here we've got it to where, all right, we found our score. We could maybe look for the base address and then keep that in. And from now on, whenever we start up the game, we load up our cheat table. We've got the base address. Once a puzzle starts up, whatever that score is, we can just manually enter that here, and then boom, we've won. Okay, but what if we want to make it to where, well, whenever we load a puzzle, no matter what the score is, okay, because it changes as you keep going through the game, we want to make one move, and then boom, our score is equal to the total needed to win. That's the kind of, you know, code that we want to inject into the game. All right. So, first things first, we can see we need to find a segment of code that we can modify, all right? And then we also need to try to find our way to here. So something that I like to do to really quickly look at other things that could be around what's going on right here, I'll copy the address, control C, and then bring up memory viewer and say tools, dissect data and structures and then you enter the memory address here okay and what you can do to find out you know like okay let's say there's some kind of uh, uh, I don't know what you would call it container or whatever just something in code that it starts you know it's called puzzle or something like that alright there's a base for puzzle and then maybe the offset 0c is your score and then you know, the offset 14 is this total, and then offset 28 is your moves. You know what I mean? So all that stuff is based on whatever's loaded for puzzle, 
what we can do is say, okay, we can either take our address here, put it in here, and then take off E8 and put in 00, zero and then what we'll see as a result is the memory address from 5394FD00 zero zero all the way up to E8 and then past that. Okay. And, um, you know, that's one way you can approach it is just take this, remember the offset E8, and then put 00. zero all right. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. All right. So we're going to keep that E8. Instead of doing that, I want to show you how you can go ahead and find whatever the base of whatever you're in, whether it's a character, you know, and then the offsets are like health and money or whatever else is tied to a character and blah blah blah. So we're gonna say find what writes to this address. Actually you could probably say find what accesses this address and go ahead and start getting some immediate values here. Alright. So ECX plus A0 to EAX. Uh, let's try what writes instead. Alright, so now we need to just make a match. Alright. So, here we go. This is it. EDI plus 00, zero blah, 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 A0. Okay? So, EDI is going to be the base of whatever this is here. So, essentially, what you could do is say, okay, I'm going to subtract A0 from this address here, and that's going to give me EDI. And if you don't want to go manually subtract that yourself, you just click on the instruction and down here we can see what EDI is before the offset A0 is added to it, which dumps us here. So see, 5394 FD48, 48 plus A0 is going to be E8. All right, so you can verify that by, let's go calc, okay. Uh, EDI, copy that, paste it, oops, you want to select hex first, clear, paste, plus A0 equals right here, okay? So that's how you could do it manually if you wanted to. So now we take EDI, and now we put here, that value here. And so now, once we hit structures, define new structure, you can just say okay, say yes 4k memory that's fine so now what you'll do is you'll look for uh, a0 alright so where's a0 here let's go to a0 see here's a0 there's our score 184 we verified that okay so remember we found EDI which is the base of whatever it starts this whole thing from <laughs> and then plus the offset A0 is where it's keeping score. All right, so we went EDI, we put the base in here, which is EDI, and now we're looking at offset A0 from EDI. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So now that we're doing that, um, now that we see that, you can look around in here in this define or dissected structure whatever and look for things that look uh, similar to what you see on your screen here like what kind of stuff do we see in close proximity to our score here well right here is 1725 which is the total number we need to win that's good for us this 17 is right here um, there's some other stuff around in here that have to do with this and the sentiment and blah blah blah. We found it. This is our spot right here. Okay? So, we've got what we need to write our cheat now. Alright? So, to write your cheat, we're going to want to find what writes to the address again. Okay? We could have just kept that window up from before, but I closed it. Let's make a match. Okay? Here we go. Now you can say show and disassembler, which will bring up the memory viewer. And right here, it dumps you at the instruction that we're looking at right here. Okay? So right here is right here. You can say stop and close. We don't need that any longer. Okay, we can scroll up. 
and you know look around for more stuff if you want or you know maybe there's some other stuff happening in code that we're interested in um, but now we know that our score is offset a zero and the score we need to win is offset a four so you could like look up through the code here and be like well do we see that offset from EDI anywhere else as we go up we see a four here all right, so there's the score that we need to win being moved into EAX. And then I bet there's a comparison somewhere with EAX and, you know, what we have going on with our score. There's some kind of, uh, maybe in this call, there's something going on where our move that we made subtracts our new score total from the total needed to win and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, this is how you can look around in code and say, well, I want to try to maybe find different shit to do. You know what I mean? But all that we want to do right here is instead of it moving whatever's in EAX into EDI plus A0, which we've identified is our score, we want to make it move the score needed to win into that memory address. All right? So we have our instructions selected here. We can say Tools, Auto Assemble, Template, AOB Injection. We want the jump to happen there. Yep, that's fine. You can keep that. We'll just keep everything like it is. Anything in between curly braces is considered a comment, so this doesn't mean anything. If you want to comment an individual line, you just do whack whack ASDF, right? Just going to go ahead and delete that because I don't need it. We know that should be unique. All right, remember how I talked about finding a good enough signature? I'll go ahead and add couple more let's just do this and later I'll cover more things about this okay because you'll need to sometimes it'll take a lot of work for you to find a unique signature it won't just be this easy all right so we've got our AOB scan okay once the injection happens it goes to inject it's just gonna jump to code right here and currently what it has in code is what the game has in it. We haven't modified anything. Okay, it's got the code from what's in the game right there. So you can comment that out if you want to still keep the original code there or you can just nix it and just do what you want with it because down here, like when you select to do an AOB scan, it gives you a snippet of code from here. Alright, and it shows you where you're injecting to and then, you know, it's just a nice little snapshot of code so that you can pretty much always get back to this point. You know, like let's say cheat engine crashes or whatever. Um, well, if it crashes, that's not good. But if you save your script right now, file assigned to current cheat table, and then we save that, close the game, come back, open up the script, we can do a manual array of byte scan like we did at first for an array of bytes here, you know, this array and then we can find our way back into this section of code, okay, if we need to or whatever. So that's what that's good for. Um, but anyway, now we need to modify our code to do what we want to do. So first I'm going to say push EBX because I want to use the EBX register. I don't want to mess up whatever is in EBX right now. Okay, so you push EBX onto the stack, which is going to save whatever's in EBX now, and then we can start messing with EBX, and then when we're done, whatever was in EBX, we'll put that back into it. All right, so we push EBX onto the stack, and then what we want to do is put into EBX the value of what's needed to win, which we've identified the score is the offset A0, which we see here, EDI plus A0. So the total score needed to win is here, A4. All right, so we can copy this and we can say, all right, push into EBX, then let's move into EDI plus A4, um, or I'm sorry, we'll move whatever is in here into EBX all right and then we can move EBX into our score and then we can pop 
EBX, which returns EBX to what it was before we started screwing with it. All right. Unfortunately, you can't just move the value inside of one address reference like this into another. Um, you know, something like move, you know, the score located here into here. <laughs> that would be great if we could do that because then it would just be that one line and that'd be awesome. But you'll learn the limitations of assembly as you get more and more into it. Uh, so that's it. This is our cheat. We push EBX, we're moving the winning score into EBX, then we move what's in EBX into our score, and then we pop EBX, and then it returns to the original code. All right. So to test this, we could even do this, sub uh, EBX1. So we can subtract 1 from EBX, which should, therefore, give us the winning score minus 1 into our score when we enable this cheat. So we should see 1724 when we enable this. Let's go File, Assign to Current Cheat Table, close that. Okay, we're going to just nix that. And now we can call this uh, Insta Win insta win whatever okay and now what we can do is you know because you enable it you know whenever the user enables it that's whenever you check this box here right so the first thing that we're gonna do is wait for cheat engine to respond again there we go uh, sometimes your AOB scan can take a little bit alright so um, let's do this let's just close this all right, now watch right here because it's going to change this when it allocates new mem. It's going to change this to our jump, which is going to jump to some completely new spot in memory where nothing's going on. Run our code and then it'll return right here. So as soon as we do this array of byte scan and enables, you'll see this change. Okay, waiting, waiting, waiting. Why isn't that working? I'll tell you why it's probably not working. Some array of byte, or part of these bytes is... I probably overwrote something here. Let's see. 0, 0, 8B47, 8B47. Yep, I have 8B47 twice, like a dummy. There we go. All right, so if your script doesn't work, and it should it's probably your fault and not cheat engines <laughs> all right so pro tip here we go enable bam there's our jump okay so now we can right click and say follow and here we are some new spotted memory that was allocated by cheat engine pushes ebx moves the winning score into ebx it's going to subtract one from that here bam jump back to here which we follow and we're back there so see here was our jump we went and did that and then we returned right back here cool right so now if we disable the script boom it returns the original array of bytes the original instruction right there so let's go ahead and do this let's enable it let's make a match and let's see what happens to our score there we go it works just like we wanted it to. So now we could double click on our score here that we found and say, you know, 1725 and win. Or close this. All right. Get rid of that sub, or I'll just comment it out. Say OK. Enable it. Uh, let's set our score to 20. OK. Disable that. Our score is 20. Let's make a match here. Alright, so 20 plus whatever that score was gives us 30. Now we're going to re-enable our script here. Let's make a match. And... Success! We've won! Amazing! Alright, so now she's happy because we're going to go bang it out in my room. All right, and this brings out, uh, or brings up rather, brings out, <laughs> brings up one more uh, thing here. Okay, so in this game, 
there's a lot of uh, this kind of stuff going on okay this puzzle is slightly different because there's no number of moves or anything what happens is as you make matches the score counts up and then it counts down okay so you have to keep making matches like as fast as possible and then she's being pleasured and blah 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 well there's a thing in the game here where once you get up to a certain score her bra comes off or whatever all right <laughs> so um just the uh, the code is shared basically for this puzzle and like a regular date puzzle all right like the one that we just did so you know if we enabled this what's going to happen is because there's something going on if we now click on the or let's see score and we say what uh accesses this address look at all this going on so you've constantly got something going on with our score here that's basically you know doing whatever math to make it auto countdown uh, right after you score something okay so while all that's going on basically if we move if, if we enable our script as it is now it basically auto wins without even making a match all right oh the game crashed or it didn't crash that was weird anyway um, so instead of creating the insta win situation what we can do is that sub right there and so what happens is that keeps us from putting the winning score instantly into here and then we don't get to see the animation okay us uh, damn it did crash anyway I don't know why it crashed but uh Okay, EBX push, I pop EBX. Yeah, it shouldn't have been my script. Maybe I screwed something up there. But anyway, long story short, this solution that I came up with is good for winning the regular puzzles. And then whenever you uncomment that out, it would do the animation in the game where we'd get to see, you know, cartoon boobies or whatever. And then it's all fun. All right. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, I think I covered a lot. I know this video got pretty extensive, but for those of you who are really wanting to learn this stuff, I hope that you saw a lot of good stuff. All right, so thanks so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts. If there's something else that you want me to cover a little more in depth that I didn't, I'd be happy to make another video. I'll probably do another video on this kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, we'll just go from there. So thanks again. See you guys in the next video. Take care.